Well, good morning, welcome. Good morning. Lovely to see you all once again. Been a bit of a warm week, amen. Yes. <laughs> bit of a warm day today, no doubt, but lovely that we're here in the Lord's house together. Thank you, Vicky, that was fantastic. Thanks for that. Great to have you sharing with us today. Let's just spend a, a moment in prayer together. Father God, as we just take a moment now to just be in your presence. Lord, we do thank you for the work of GMP. Thank you for lives that have changed. Thank you for people that give and serve and care and help. Thank you for the little snapshot we've seen this morning, Lord God, from South Sudan. How real change is happening because of the generosity of Christian people and the sacrifice of men. Lord bless Vicky in her work. Lord God, as it takes her to many places and opens many doors where she can bring the love of Christ to others and inspire churches and people to play their part. And Father, for us as a church community, as we continue to seek you and to care and to help and to guide one another, Lord, I pray that this morning that we can just hear from your word. Father God, for those who have had operations and different things through the week and time in hospital and recovery, Lord, we just pray that you just bless them. Bless those who need your healing touch today. Strengthen those who may be troubled. Comfort those who may be hurt. Lord God, we thank you that you are a God that brings life to dead things. That you are a restorer of lives and a giver of hope. Lord, bless our time this morning, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. So I've been on deck now two weeks. My, where's that gone? Yeah. <laughs> it's flowed. It's been good to be out and about, catching up with different people, meeting different people, knocking on different doors, and... and um, had a lovely chat. Any of you go to Feelin's Bakery? If you're feeling hungry, pop in there. Go and see Leanne. She is great. Pop in there up on the corner where the new servo is in the bakery. Lovely lady. Had a great chat with her during the week. And so I said, I'll encourage my church to go and buy bread. So go and buy your bread from there. So if you don't know, if you haven't ever popped in, apparently they've been there about two years. Looks like the shop opened yesterday. Um, beautiful, fantastic. So pop in there, say hi to her. Tell her Michael's. Uh, yes, yeah, so you'll go who? <laughs> some bloke I met her, some pastor bloke that popped in for a cold drink. Yes, uh, so have a yeah, great community, great people, lots of need, a lot of hurt, a lot of agencies uh, trying to help people, uh, put up with care, which is great. Uh, wonderful work they do down, uh, families together, and foster care, and it's, it's been great to hear all the great things that happen in this neck of the woods. So, God bless you and all you do. This morning, if you're taking notes, it's called Life in Dead Places. That sounds, well, it sort of sounds, it will be encouraging by the end, but we've got to get there. When the hand of Jesus touches your life, what may have looked dead comes back to life. I'm excited that we don't worship or celebrate a pile of dead old bones. Maybe there's something in your life that needs restoring that is dead. Let God restore those dead places today. We're looking at a miracle of Jesus. It's Luke chapter 7. It's raising of a young man back to life. Be up on the screen there for you and we'll follow along for a little bit. Soon afterwards, Jesus went with his disciples to the village of Nain and a large crowd followed him. A funeral procession was coming out and as he approached the village gate, the young man who had died was a widow's only son, and a large crowd from the village was there. When the Lord saw her, his heart overflowed with compassion. Don't cry, he said. Then he, Jesus, walked over to the coffin and touched it. And the bearers stopped. Young man, he said, I tell you, get up. Then the dead boy sat up and began to talk. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. 
Verse 16, great fear swept the crowd and they praised God saying, a mighty prophet has risen amongst us and God has visited his people today. And the news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding countryside. Would have been quite a dramatic day, wouldn't it? You had one thing planned, one thing in mind, but the whole situation changed. They're watching a funeral procession of this young man who died, his mother a widow. There's a lot of sadness, a lot of despair. And this poor mother, Jesus sees her and something touches his heart. And he says to this poor woman, don't cry. And that's a word of hope for us today. Don't cry, wipe your tears. God's got things in hand. He is in control. What may seem dead is about to change. What looks broken is about to be fixed. The sick healed. Where there was once death, life will leap forth. And so there's this picture in Luke 7 verse 14. Then he went up and touched the coffin, and those carrying it stood still. He said, young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. That is a beautiful picture of restoration. Amen? We're on the way to the grave. But God restores this young man's life. And God can restore my life and your life. God cares about people. God cares about family. God cares about this widow's situation. Because things were very different back then. She would now have no one to care for her. Well, her son was dead. And so he restores his life. Things were very different in Bible times. And he reunites his son and mother. This is the first time that Jesus had raised someone from the dead. Friends, Jesus brings life to dead places. For those standing by that day, it would have been just another funeral. The man was dead, but Jesus changed it all. His touch was a life-giving touch. His word was a life-giving word. Let Jesus touch our lives afresh today. Make him number one in your life. They may be carrying you out. You might be on the way to the graveside, but God can still reach us. Maybe you're praying for a friend, hoping for a loved one to have an encounter with Jesus. God is not done yet. Let him touch your life with his love and mercy and grace and power. He is the restorer. He is the healer. He is our Savior. Let Jesus Christ bring life to us. This young man's life had ended. His lifeless body was in the coffin. He could do nothing to earn the touch from Jesus. He could talk, he could blink, he could wiggle his little toe. He was lifeless. He was dead. Now we're not going to Monty Python. (laughs) On the way out, he couldn't pray, he couldn't speak, he couldn't worship. He he was dead and couldn't do anything. But the Lord had compassion upon this little family that day. And speaks a word of hope and speaks a word of life. God comes and touches him saves him from death that day let God save us and restore us and heal us God loves you he came in human form stop thinking you've got to do this or that to earn his favour to earn his love, to earn his acceptance 
He loves you and I already. Accept that love. In the New Testament, in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, the first six verses there, I want to read it from the message from Eugene Peterson's paraphrase, and Eugene passed away uh, towards the end of last year. And he wrote, uh, and in Ephesians 2, 1 to 6, let us reflect on these points. It wasn't so long ago that you were marred in that old, stagnant life of sin. You let the world, which doesn't know the first thing about living, tell you how to live. You filled your lungs with polluted unbelief and then exalted, and then exhaled, sorry, disobedience. We all did it. All of us doing what we felt like doing, when we felt like doing it. All of us in the same boat. It's a wonder God didn't lose his temper and do it away with the whole lot of us. Instead. Instead. Maybe you need that word today. Immense in mercy and with an incredible love, he embraced us. Took our sin, dead lives, and made us alive in Christ. He did all this on his own, with no help from us. Then he picked us up and set us down in the highest heaven in company with Jesus, our Messiah. God loves you. God can restore your life. Restore your relationships. God can care for us all. we just got to let him. A skydiver was enjoying a free fall, floating down through the sky, when he realised that he reached the right attitude, so he pulls his ripcord, but nothing happens. He pulls it again. He was an experienced skydiver. Anyone skydive? Great. You sensible people. Yes. He's pulling on his ripcord and nothing's happening. No problem, he thinks to himself. I've got the emergency chute. Of course. So he pulls on that. Nothing happens. He pulls again. Nothing happens. Now the man begins to panic. Well, we all will. What am I going to do with this? I'm a god. This is, this is the end. Just then he sees a man flying up from the earth towards him. He can't figure out where this man's come from or what he's doing. And he says to himself, maybe he can help me. If not, I'm in real trouble. When the man gets closer, the skydiver cups his hands and he shouts in a loud voice, Hey, do you know anything about parachutes? The man is coming closer and closer and he cups his hand and says, No! Do you know anything about gas ovens? <laughs> Don't think that was going to end well. There's this dramatic picture, if you know your Bible, in Ezekiel. It's the valley of dry bones. Like, that just gives me the horrors. Bones everywhere in this valley. The valley of dead, dry bones. It's Ezekiel 13, sorry, 37, 1 to 14. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. Imagine that. Death, lifeless bones all around God's word and God's touch can bring life to these bones. Verse 7, so I prophesied and as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying there was a noise, a rattling sound. See that creeps you out. And the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Here God saw life in this picture. In this valley, God sees the possibilities before we do. He brings order to the death and the chaos. Don't see yourself as a pile of old bones, but God sees our worth. 
from verse 9. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life, and they stood up on their feet, a vast army. God brings things together for us. God brought those bones together and formed life. Friends, God often does his best work in the valley than he does on the mountaintop. I believe it. We see it. We'll see it. The right people, the right places, the right time, the right plans, the right purposes that he has for us as we continue to step out into this new year. As we walk together and make a difference for those around us. God the Father is bringing life to those dead places. It might have looked a bit lifeless last year, but now there's some new growth. An encounter from Jesus will make all the difference. Last week we saw the woman at the well brought into a relationship with, with Jesus through an encounter with him. Today a lifeless body of a young man is brought back to life. As a church, let us see Jesus more clearly. Let us hear God more loudly. May we speak of his mercy and grace. May we share his words of hope and salvation. Let him use you to share his message in real and tangible ways. When the hand of Jesus touches you, what may have looked dead, what may have looked hopeless, will come back to life. God bless you. Amen.